Hello, friends. Welcome to the Wake Up With Gratitude podcast. I'm your host, Julie Boyer. And before we get into this recording, I wanted to acknowledge that we are here on the traditional unceded territory of the Snanawas people. Um, and why this is really important today is not only is it important to acknowledge where we are on this unceded territory, but I have the joy and the honor to interview a local friend and entrepreneur, Robin Buchanan. Hello, my friend. Hello, Julie. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited for this connection because it's really interesting. So Robin uh, and I, she didn't know me. I, I was introduced to her through back when she was doing some more gardening videos through a friend of ours, a mutual friend, Kim. And uh, then a few months ago, I guess I was, I subscribed to your YouTube channel and started being um, prompted to watch some of Robin's videos. Now Robin's video uh, business is called Minimalist Home and she is a declutter coach, but also a really amazing educator. In fact, her YouTube blew me away. She's at close to 5,000 subscribers and she does this amazing way to teach you simple tips and ideas about what minimalism can look like for your family because she's a working mom, she has a family. And I find that I'm just really inspired to make changes when I listen to Robin's videos. And then she did this really great video talking about how minimalism and gratitude can be connected. So I reached out and said, Robin, you know, you're local. I've got to have you on my podcast. I didn't even know we lived in the same city. So, mm -hmm. so here we are. So Robin, um, as I love to start my podcast, would you mind sharing a little bit of your story with us? Sure. So I am, um, I'm a mom, I've got three boys. And when my youngest was one, um, so they were three, five and one, I went to nursing school. And so that was a pretty big undertaking to do when you have three young boys at home. And, you know, I always strive to get good marks and I wanted to learn things well and um, everything. So, but I did notice that our house was kind of cluttered and we did have that problem previously in our house before that. And, you know, it was sort of like the basement was just always messy. Mm -hmm. And I did find that it stressed me out. And, but being a nurse was different because when I would go to work, uh, in the emergency department and be dealing with these really upsetting and traumatic experiences with people, or it was just very busy, but usually, I mean, there was always sort of something that was upsetting every day and I would come home. And when you come home, you want your home to be a place where you can recharge, where you can be at peace and just sort of like, it's like your destination every day. But when I would get home, it was usually quite cluttered. It was a little bit messy. The kids sort of had their stuff everywhere and, you know, I always would think, oh, you know, it's the toys, it's this, it's that, I need to deal with that. But really, it wasn't the kid's fault. It was, we just had too much stuff. And so we hired house cleaners, but it was that whole, you know, clean the house before the cleaners come. We'd spend at least an hour picking things up and, you know, screaming at the kids, go and do this, blah, blah, blah. And I would be like, okay, I'll have them come Monday. So then we have Sunday to clean up. But then they, you know, that was ruined Sunday. So then we were like, well, let's have them come Friday. So we'll do Thursday. Well, like a midweek, like frantic clean, because you're just moving all of this clutter around. And ultimately that the problem wasn't getting the house clean. It was just that there was always clutter. And so somebody had posted something a couple, and funny enough, it might be our mutual friend, Kim, that did it that posted something a couple of years ago and it said, women are really affected by clutter. And I was like, oh, maybe this is why I'm the only one that seems to be bothered by this. And I, you know, I mentioned it to my husband and he was like, yeah, I mean, I don't love it, but it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't stop me from anything. And I, I always found like, I couldn't relax when the house was messy. And way back when I was single and I had my own little basement suite, I couldn't relax until it was clean, but that was very easy to do because I was one person. I didn't have a ton of stuff. But once I had my, um, once I had my family and they all come with stuff and, you know, people leaving their things around, I mean, me leaving some of my things around and just thinking you need to have all of these things when in actuality, it, it really is holding you back. And as a woman, you are affected by clutter because you never feel like your job is done at the end of the day. And as a mom, I mean, it, it really isn't, but on top of it all, you think, well, I could be doing this, I could be doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, in Canada, uh, where we are in particular, there's a lot of open concept, you know, like the great room, the living room, the kitchen. And honestly, they, 
you don't have that you you just see the mess all the time so we were like we need to be clutter oh my goodness i was nodding and laughing through a lot of what you were saying there because i totally <laughs> get it i'm yeah. i have a question though i'm curious to know as like growing up like as a child and a team were you organized in your own spaces before or like, how did you feel about the mess and the clutter? Do you remember like as a kid, what you were like? Like, I know that I was, I liked it when my things would be organized and I would like going through my stuff and like trying to sort out what I needed and didn't need from probably a, a fairly young age. I, I like to sort things out because I'm like a keeper of like memories and stuff. Mm. I used to be a really big collector too, had to get over that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I'm curious for you, what was it like as like kid Robin? Well, it's, it's interesting that you asked me that question because when I am coaching my clients on their decluttering, that is probably the first question I ask them is what, what was it like for you growing up? And for me, it's funny because it was very much the same situation. I had, we, we got things and that is what I think a lot, a lot of people my age are, you know, I'm 41. Uh, this is what a lot of us have grown up with because our the generation before that, they didn't, you didn't get rid of things because, you know, they're coming out. You know, I have a grandpa who has passed away, of course, because he was born in 1907. Well, he didn't get rid of anything because yeah. imagine what he, he grew up through and, you know, was an adult through. Like all of that time, there was so much. So during that time, we had, um, I got the sidetracked. So you were just talking about your, how your grandfather yes. who was born in 1907, grew up in a time when they didn't get rid of anything. Yeah. And then that's so right. That affected. Yeah. And so, life. so growing up with people around you who don't declutter and, you know, Christmas in our family, it was always huge. We always got a lot of presents at Christmas and birthdays and our bedrooms were getting really full of things. And every now and then my mom would be like, clean your room. And of course, like we didn't know what that meant. And, but so she would come in and help us blitz it. And it was amazing to have it nice and clean, but then it would get cluttered again. And so it's interesting that that sort of was my lifestyle for most of my life, except for maybe that little bit of time when I lived by myself for three years, but I still did have boxes of things, but I liked when it was calm and clean. And that's the boxes of things too, is a big one that I'm dealing with right now as I'm moving. So, I mean, I did ask Robin to come on the podcast a little bit selfishly because <laughs> I wanted to get to talk to her personally about my own, a little bit about what I'm going through as I'm moving. Um, probably by the time this comes live, actually, I will have moved and I've been learning so much from your videos. So I, I do want to mention that we're not going to be able to get into a lot of the details of the how to's and the ideas that Robin has. So her YouTube video or her YouTube channel is going to be your best uh, resource. And it's just, is it Minimalist Home on YouTube? Yes. The YouTube channel is called Minimalist Home. Okay, great. So yes. we'll make sure that you connect there because that's how I've been learning. And every time you come out with a video, I'm like, I, yes, exactly right there right now. Mm -hmm. So boxes. So this was my mm -hmm. big thing. So I moved from Ontario to the mainland, then the mainland to the island. And now we're moving within, you know, 10 minutes away. So we're on our third move in less than four years. And I had these boxes, these like storage boxes of things, photo albums, cards, letters, memories, and all that. And I decided, and it partly inspired by you, Robin, and watching what you were doing. And also because our new home doesn't have a garage, so we have a storage room, but you know, it can't, there's no way all that I had would have fit in the storage room, even though it was not a ton. And I started doing the work of working through my stuff. And I'll tell you that, you know, it feels, it actually feels good to be like, I went from 12 boxes to like three. Mm -hmm. So talk about that process of like, how do you like when you started with your boxes, like how did you approach it? Because I think that's scary for a lot of people. Yeah, so we had something similar. So after we moved, we had a bunch of boxes. And our my chiropractor, funny enough, was like, everybody has a box room for a year. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because we do. It's a rather large room and it is full of boxes. So once we started decluttering, you know, I really had to get into the mind frame of like, what do what what do I need? What do I want to keep? Um, is this stuff that we can find on your website? Is that where you're leading us to? 
No, <laughs> but I should, now that you say that, I'm like, I should put that on my website. You should okay. put that. Cause yeah. okay. So let me just like, while you're searching for that, like, cause we all watched, right. The Marie Kondo, this brings yeah. oh. me joy. This, right. Mm. I know exactly. So I started doing that. And then I was like, but I, there's some things that I get, but I go through these boxes and I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. really, I don't know. I, this doesn't make sense to me when I'm yeah. doing this stuff with like memories and stuff. So yeah. One thing that I did with photo, al- I had so many photo albums and I was like, I'm never going to scan all these. So one thing I did was I went through the, I did go through all of them and I would pull out a photo that had a happy memory to it. Mm-hmm. And all I did right now, and I just like, so this is my own journey. It might not be in this. This is what's great about this whole process is minimalism isn't the same for everybody, which I think right. we talk about a lot. Yes. So I pulled the pictures and put them into an envelope per year. And so I have now a small box with just envelopes. Mm -hmm. So next project is to scan and to, you know, make them into like photo books. But for now I was like, I'm moving. I'm not taking four huge boxes of photo albums with me. I'm going to start there. So that's what I did to get through my photo albums. That's good. Um, Yeah. So when I am, when I am decluttering, I like, I go through these questions for myself and it's really I just go like, number one, do I use this? This is really helpful, like in the kitchen, right? But even if you just have like a box, um, it's easy to know you're probably not using it because it's in a box, right? Sometimes you're like, I have been looking for this. Oh my gosh, I wish I had this. But usually that's not the case, right? Um, The second thing is like, do I like this? This can apply to artwork or anything. And the funniest thing about... um, do I like this is does this make me feel good because a lot of things that we keep don't make us feel good or mm-hmm. they remind us of a time that wasn't great you know like if, if you have like a box of things from high school maybe not all of that is happy memories right and the fourth thing I ask is like why do I have this so mm-hmm. if you're you know I, I think it's great to have like a small box of keepsakes from your own life or for your kids you know like we often are going through things um, and we're really struggling with the memories that come from them. And, you know, my dad is an example of a person who has like a ton of things. And I always say to him, like, or I have been saying, you know, you can't like, you don't want to sacrifice your present moment for the sake of those memories. You don't want to be surrounded by clutter. And just because you have these memories that you want to remember. And a lot of the time, you have things that you want to declutter and you think, oh no, because it makes me think of so-and-so. Well, you're probably not going to forget that person, right? But if you do, then, you know, is it still worth keeping all of that stuff around? Probably not. Oh, you said something totally wise that I was trying to write down, but it was like around sacrificing your present yes. moment for all yeah, this I actually clutter have, yeah. and memories. Yeah. Like, oh, so good. Um, Yes, I agree. This is so helpful. Mm-hmm. I think for so many of us, it's not just moms, like just this, like feeling like, you know, we've been living in our homes for the past year. Yeah. Right. You were, you homeschooled your children. Mm-hmm. So I know how much you enjoyed that time. Oh, so, so much. They're going so back much. in September, <laughs> but everyone is in the house. Like really we mm-hmm. spent a year in our homes and all of yeah. a sudden we realized like, wait a minute, like, I don't even, do I even use any of this stuff? I, I still haven't gone through my office, which again, doesn't have a ton of stuff. I've, you know, been, re- I reduced on a regular basis, but it, I think just over time, you just gather more stuff. So my next step, I think this weekend is the office to like reduce the office. Cause I have a much smaller office uh, in my new place. And I think these are really good. Like you just said those, those four questions that I think are going to be helpful for those that maybe they aren't moving or maybe they're mm-hmm. not going anywhere, but perhaps they feel like They don't even know where to start when they look around in the clutter that's surrounding them. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times, you know, like even just going through boxes, if it's been sitting in a box, you're not using it usually. And, um, but more importantly to me is just that feeling of clutter around us, you know, like with my kids being home this year, it has been a struggle for me only because, you know, not aside from my youngest and how great he was to deal with, but really it was, it was the, the stuff laying around, like the, the schoolwork and being like, okay, you gotta put it away. Like it's making mommy lose my mind because I don't want that stuff sitting around. And, and that really impacts you because 
your brain is actually using calories every time it sees anything and your brain doesn't want to. So it really recognizes these things as a real nuisance. So if you've ever gone to a hotel room and you look around, it's calm. I mean, unless you're in a really weird one, but it's usually calm <laughs> and there's nothing on the wall generally, or it's a really plain kind of painting. And it's, it's kind of a serene environment. And I know for me, anytime we've gone away, I've always been like, I just want to stay in this hotel room. I don't even want to go out. Like it's nice and calm in here. Right. So I think that that is a lot of people don't recognize that. And once they start decluttering and they have that actual peace in their home, then they're like, oh my goodness, I've been missing this all of this time. And you, you mentioned you were inspired by a really famous minimalist, uh, Josh Becker. He's mm -hmm. the author of Becoming Minimalist. It's a blog. It's a, you know, a really great resource. But what I love, it, Rob, what I love about your videos is that I feel like they're really personal and I feel like I really connect to you as a mom um, and as a Canadian. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. because you're sharing things that we can do, like that are available in Canada. Mm -hmm. You've got a great cleaning routine that I also, um, I love that. That was very, very helpful, your cleaning routine. But I, I just want to share like a couple things, a quotes that, you know, really help us understand how gratitude and uh, decluttering are really connected. And um, there was a quote you shared that was, you know, this isn't the year to acquire more stuff. This is the year to appreciate everything you have. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about how gratitude fits in with this whole process. Um. I hope that sound wouldn't be picked up, would it? No, nope. I don't know how to mute that. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's interesting with, you know, going back to my career as an emergency nurse, I see people at their absolute worst and I see people young who are dying or struggling. I see old people who are really struggling just to walk across the room. And it really makes me feel grateful for everything in my life. Um, and I mean, I certainly have bad days like anyone, but this year in particular, there have been so many things that have been a real challenge, you know, throughout the whole COVID. But I think that really recognizing all of the gifts that we truly have and all of the, how really things that so many people have been striving for, for all of their lives is to just get more, get more, get more, get more money, get more this, get more that. When in particular, when you actually just need to take time and enjoy life. You need to have downtime. You need to have quiet time. You need to have peace. And this is something that a lot of us didn't even recognize until all, all of a sudden everybody was told you need to stay home. And so when Joshua Becker put that quote up, I was like, exactly, exactly. This is what people need to do because this is what I'd actually been trying to promote beforehand. But now suddenly it was like, boom, people just, they, they had nothing to do. So unless they tried really hard, it was hard to avoid that. Well, that, and that concept of when you look around the room and, you know, you look and you can appreciate and smile, that's actually one of my favorite gratitude practices is it's just gratitude in place where you look around the space that you're in and you look at the things and find gratitude for just having stuff in it. Um, Joshua Becker also says this really great quote, which is look around all that clutter used to be money. Yes. And, I love that one. Ah, it's so true. And it's so and it's, true. And that is actually one of the things that I really like to focus on too. It's like, and I haven't actually, I don't think I have done a video on this and I, I plan to, and it is about when you're shopping because that's just it. Like a lot of us, it's like, does this purchase? And he actually has said this before. Does this purchase support my goals? Like mm. what are my goals? And does this purchase support it? Am I yeah. buying this because it's on sale? How many people do that? You know? And so every time before I buy anything, I think, do I have something at home that could like substitute for this? Or do I have a place to put this? So I bought my husband a turkey deep fryer and it was a real struggle for me to decide if I was going to do that because it's big, it's bulky, but he does a lot of like stir fry cooking that he wants to do outside. And, you know, we thought, okay, but I really was like, oh gosh, like it was really hard for me to make that purchase, but I'm glad we did because it is used quite a lot. But before you buy something, you need to have a place to put it and you're going, you're just throwing money away. Yeah, it's, and the kitchen for sure is one of the most difficult places to go through this, um, mm -hmm. to make those decisions. Um, you shared a really amazing nugget the other day. What it was the 20 minute thing, $20, oh, 20 goodness. minutes. 
Yeah, I really like this. So there are these two guys called the minimalists. And oh, yeah. it's um, Ryan Nicodemus and Joshua. Some, oh my gosh, I forget his last name. Joshua. I've, I've, I've seen those Joshua guys too. Yeah. Milburn. Joshua yeah. Fields Milburn, I believe. And so he, they say, if you can, if you're, this is really good in the kitchen, but I always really think about this in like the garage or shed type yeah. things or you know, those things that you're hanging on to and you think I could use this one day. And that is, you know, something that a lot of people struggle with. But if you can replace it for less than 20 minutes for less than $20, you should probably declutter it. And I go further and I just say to people, you are probably if you had 100 things that you kept, a lot of people do, you're probably not even going to use 95 of them. Yeah. So you're keeping 100 for what, you know, and then 85. Right. So I use this strategy on the weekend. Oh, I totally use it. So we were cleaning out our garage. Again, our garage wasn't actually full of a lot of stuff that, you know, so we have this whole section of the garage now, which is like donate giveaway garage sale. We are going to do a garage sale. My daughter wants to do a garage sale. She like runs it herself. She's 10. So she's all excited about running her garage sale. And then everything else, which this is something I think that I struggle with is like figure out what goes donate, what goes dump, what goes to restore that thing. But when we were cleaning out the garage, we had like a couple boxes of like hardware, mm -hmm. right? And I just kept thinking like 20 minutes, $20. I'm like, nope, 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 yeah. nope, nope. You know what? The whole box. Because yeah. first of all, are you even going to like be able to find what you're looking for in that box in less than 20 minutes? Probably not. And most of the things in the box are definitely under $20. So I just want to say thank you because that tip really helped me to go through a ton of stuff in the garage. And I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. And yes, the garage is like definitely where that is like the most applicable. Like, why are yeah. you keeping these screws? And will you even know what they will fit? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. My husband's like, well, let's keep this stuff to hang pictures. Cause as you can see in my video, I love, I'm a photographer. That's yes. what my hobby business is. Love to hang pictures, love to hang stuff. So he's like, yeah. I know you're going to make me hang stuff in the new place. <laughs> so please make sure we have all that stuff to do. And honestly, Robin, like we generally hire a contractor because we're not really handy people. And so it's like, again, why am I even looking at that? So yeah, so helpful. Um, I really love that, you know, when you have fewer things in your life, it's easier to appreciate the things that you have. Mm -hmm. it's easier to have gratitude on a daily basis. Now, you work shift work, you have three kids, you're married, you're running a business. How do you find time for Robin to do self-care and gratitude? Well, I am really glad that you asked this because this is actually one of my biggest priorities is, is time and self-care. Because of my job, I know how easy it is to burn out. And in particular, I actually schedule in, I have a planner that I write down what I'm doing every day. And I got a special one made and I have like top five things. And the top three of them are to exercise every day, to um, write down one piece of gratitude, whether for anything. And the third one is thinking time. And I know, I don't know if a lot of people do this. I just sort of came up with it on my own. And sometimes I'll be working and I'll be like, I just really need to lie down. I just feel like I need to lie down. And I lie down and I have the most amazing rest, but it's not like I'm not sleeping. I'm just laying there and I'm thinking. And so I'm thinking about what I'm grateful for. I have a lot of creativity in those moments. And so I have my thinking time. I lie down and I sleep so much better because when I go to bed at night, I don't have those thoughts like racing through my head because I've already thought them. I've gone and lay down in the afternoon or sometimes just even like seven o'clock before we're starting to wind down for the evening. I just go and I have my thinking time. So that is how I practice gratitude. I have those moments. And to me, because as I say, with my the whole reason for my YouTube channel and my business is for people to enjoy their lives. Like I see people who do not enjoy their lives, who for many reasons struggle. And I don't want that to be me. You only have one life and I want to enjoy it. So oh. that is it. I love your message that it is about just enjoying your life because yes, yes it, it is fleeting. It moves so fast. Like we don't have to work in an emergency room to know that like mm -hmm. something can happen at any moment. And if you're bogged down by the things that are surrounding you and you're always cleaning up, it's definitely um, makes it harder to just for that thinking time. I love that. I do that too. I just didn't have a name for it. Yeah. Like, so my favorite thing. Yeah. I like to, I like to have some time. I have a tent out back, which I like to lie in and just 
sometimes I nap, but sometimes it's just leather. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, just enjoy yeah. it, it. And that's, that's a great, you know, sort of thing as we wrap things up is to really talk about how space allows creativity, right? If all of our time is booked back to back to back to back and all of the space in our home and in our offices is full, we steal our creativity. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. When I am, when I, and, and like, I, I, have, I am busy, right? Like I schedule most hours of the day, but what's great is you have to schedule those rest times because you are stealing from yourself otherwise. And on weeks when weeks and days when I am overbooked and I, I really don't have that time for myself. That's when I get grumpy. That's when I really feel like pretty much every area of my life suffers. And that is why, yes, you need to have that space and just the calm around you. It all is about just sort of like cultivating the best life that you can. Oh, I love this so much, Robin, you and I could talk for probably four or five hours. Cause I have so many <laughs> More things I'd love to talk around, uh, talk about around minimalism and this lifestyle, which I have personally been doing my best to adopt in the ways that fits for myself and my family. And I'm always inspired and always learning from you. Uh, one more time, Robin, where do we find your YouTube channel? Well, the best place to find me is actually on my website because okay. it has links to my YouTube channel. Okay. I have a blog there and um, that's where people can access my coaching. And so that is minimalisthome.ca. Perfect. Canadian minimalisthome.ca. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, and just tell us a little bit about your coaching. How, what does that look like for someone who's like, Robin, I need your help. So how do people coach with you? Well, so I've been working on my videos for a while and I'm also, um, making a course, but I, I had somebody reach out and she was like, I do not know what to do. And I said, Oh, you know, check out my playlist. And she's like, no, I need more help than that. And I said, well, I am starting one-on-one -on -one coaching if you're interested. And she said, yes, please. And so the reason why the one-on-one -on -one coaching works is because some people, they just are so overwhelmed that they just don't know where to start. And, you know, seeing a video, it just isn't enough for them to be like, I'm going to go. So we talk through what some of the past beliefs are, what some habits are, what, what, um, you know, um, what the hardest room to declutter is, why, how they purchase things and sort of where they should start because maybe where you start is not where I should start. Um, depending on often where, how people fall on like the sentimental things scale. So I definitely recommend. Okay. So of course we did mention that you are homeschooling all your kids. So mind the so, brief introduction. So you were just saying yes, little that your coaching really is about when someone just says, I don't even know where to start. Cause that's true. That's what the great thing is about free content and educating people on yeah. YouTube or through blogging. That's great. But there's always going to be people that say, that's great. And thank you so much for all that free content. But can you just tell me or show me what I need to do? And that's just it. And that's what a lot of, um, a lot of us creators on YouTube say, like, please watch all of our stuff. But if you want something that will save you more time and more of that energy and really hone in on what you specifically need, then that is why the coaching I think is helpful in particular. Um, the course is good because it's more step by step, but the coaching is much more personalized. You walk away with a document and you can check in with me anytime. I love like videos and photos people send me. It's so wonderful. Um, it, it feeds my soul to see how well my um, clients are doing. So yeah, it's, it's definitely been a really, really joyful thing for me and my clients, which is nice. Oh, thank you so much, Robin. Thank you so much for giving us an introduction to what minimalism can look like for someone with a family and kids, uh, for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom, and also for helping us to understand that, you know, when we choose to really have a space in our home that we love and have maybe fewer things, that it's so much easier to just let gratitude flow. So thanks so much, Robin, for your time today. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on.